As we near the end of our study of polynomials, we're going to be looking at how to use polynomials to model situations in the real world. And to begin this, we're going to start with what's called the n plus 1 point principle. And it states, for any set of n plus 1 points in the coordinate plane that pass the vertical line test, there is a unique polynomial of degree at most n that fits the polynomial perfectly, or fits the points perfectly. And what this means is that when working, if we're given a set of five points and each one has a different domain or x value, we can take those five points and create, because this is 5 is 4 plus 1, we could create a polynomial of degree 4 that would match the points perfectly. And we can do this for any set of points that pass. Now, that doesn't always mean that that is necessarily the true trend or the what's really happening in the system. You're going to have to look at the situation that is occurring and what we have to do in order to make it fit with the topic being discussed. And what that means, it will be explained later in this lesson. But there's ways of doing this. We can use technology. Uh, we've used linear regressions in the past to help us plot a line of best fit and we will be returning to that in our unit on statistics and probability but in your calculator we have found a lin reg which means a linear regression and normally this comes out as a plus x or ax plus b to give you a form but there were also others there's a quad reg which is a quadratic regression, meaning a line of best fits. That's what's meant by regression. There's a cubic reg, a quartic reg. Some even go as far as a quintic regression, uh, and then there's some others. But what we're looking for in this lesson is what will match the data the best. And we're going to begin with this n plus 1 principle in order to manually construct an equation from a series of points. So let's take a look at how to do that. So we're going to write a polynomial function that passes through the following points. Negative 2, 1, 0, 5, 2, 9, and 3, 36. Now, what we need to do to begin with is look at the domain values. We have negative 2, 0, 2, and 3, and since each one is different, we can use our n plus 1 principle. We have four points, so that means this is 3 plus 1. We can create a cubic function that will match these perfectly. Now, in order to do this, we have to see what the basic cubic function looks like. A basic cubic function is a x cubed plus b x squared plus c x plus d equals y. It's always going to start out with a and pass through the alphabet to represent our coefficients and we start with x raised to the power of whatever degree polynomial we're looking at. So if we were doing a quintic, it'd be ax to the fifth, bx to the fourth, and so on and so on until we run out of x's. We get a last value and then a y. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these x values from our points and substitute them in to this general equation and come out with our response. If I cube negative 2, I will come out with negative 8a. If I square negative 2, I will get 4b. Then I have minus 2c plus d equals 1. Next, we're going to substitute in 0. So I get 0a, 0b, 0c plus d equals 5. It's very nice when they give you a free one. Uh, our third point, if I substitute in 2 for all those x values, I will get 8a plus 
plus 4b plus 2c plus d equals 9. And last, if I substitute in a 3, I will get 27a plus 9b plus 3c plus d equals 36. And we can use these to start narrowing things down. And what I need in the end is to know what A, B, C, and D are all equal to. Now, I know D is equal to 5, so I have that one finished. Next, I see, based on the fact that I had this negative 2 and positive 2, that my first and third equations look very much alike and using elimination I'd be able to narrow it down pretty quickly. So let's take those two equations substituting in my value for D I come out with negative 8a plus 4b minus 2c plus 5 equals 1 and 8a plus 4b plus 2c plus 5 equals 9. Now subtracting the 5 from both sides and both equations I come out with a negative 4 in the first one and a positive 4 in the second one. Now because my coefficients have opposite values I'm simply going to add these two equations together and I'm going to come out with 0 a's, 8 b's, 0 c's equal to 0. Dividing by 8, I find that b equals 0. Now, I can go back and find either my a or c. But in order to do this, I need to work with the fourth equation. So, pulling the fourth equation aside, I have 27a. b is 0, so 9b makes no difference. Plus 3c. d is equal to 5, and I'm going to subtract that away. So 36 minus 5 is 31. Next, because these are both positive, I need a negative value. I'm going to take my first equation, and I will need to use it in such a way that I can get rid of this 3c. Negative uh, 2c, if I multiply that by 1 and a half, I would get negative 3c. So I'm going to take this entire equation and multiply it by 1 and a half. 8 times 1 and a half is 12. The b doesn't matter because b is equal to 0. Negative 2c times 1 and a half is a negative 3c. And then 1, oh, sorry, we had a 5 in here. We subtract that away and got a negative 4 by substituting in D. Negative 4 times 1 and a half is a negative 6. Now, again, because we have a positive and negative here, I'm simply going to add these values together, these equations, and I come out with 15 a is equal to 25. Dividing by 15, we come out to where A is 5 thirds. Then going back and using that in one of my original equations, I'm going to have, uh, let's take the third one, 8 times 5 thirds plus 4 times 0 plus 2c plus 5 which is d equals 9 so multiplying and subtracting I will get 40 thirds plus 2c equals 4 and just to make it easy I'm going to have that say 12 thirds subtracting 40 thirds from the 12 thirds I have 2c is equal to 28 thirds. 
dividing both sides by 2, c is equal to 14 thirds. So my end equation is going to look like 5 thirds x cubed plus 14 thirds x plus 5 equals y. Now we can use technology for this. In unit 3 we talked about being able to use matrices to solve and running this through a matrix calculator I come out with this. So my reduced row echelon form that we talked about putting in all the coefficients in this augmented matrix all the y value answers and hit enter I receive this a is 5 thirds b is 0 c is negative 14 thirds and d is 5 now I tried running this through a regression system for cubic and the only difference was this b value came out with something along the lines of 0 point, or 6 point zero two e negative 12 and that e means times 10 to the so that means a 0 decimal 11 zeros 602 um, a very small number basically we're looking at 0 anyway sometimes the calculator has small confusion problems so manual computation or the uh, matrix editor will correct for those but what else can we do with this let's take a look at an actual situation that we can use a comparison of matrices or a comparison of regressions so the table represents US per capita cheese consumption for the given year use technology to write a linear model to represent the data so if we call 1900 the year zero so uh, x equals zero represents 1900 and we put this into a calculator we can come up with a series of regressions um, having done this I constructed the data points and plotted them first and came out with a graph that looks like this along my x-axis I go from 0 to 125 in other words from 1900 to 2025 y-axis I went from 0 to 50 to give me a little bit of room for growth and I plotted the points now once I started looking at these I tried first to construct a linear regression and I came up with the following for my data points you can see that the line passes through the center of the points roughly the same number of points below as we have above but more important the sum of the distances is what we look at for regression line um, it works okay but it in the end when we talk about behavior it looks like the cheese consumption is going up quite a bit but our linear model is showing a straight line next I tried using quadratics and I came up with this model. It did solve part of the problem. You can see that it is matching that end behavior. Um, it doesn't quite follow at the beginning here because it, I really doubt that prior to 1900 cheese consumption was equivalent to what it is around 2000. Um, but it does match a little bit better. Next, if we were to run a cubic regression through this, we come out with a graph that looks like this. Now, we were dealing originally with six points, so that means we could go up as far as a quintic regression, but this seems to model the data pretty well. If we take a look, moving into the future, it is matching our data trend, not perfectly, but it's getting there. And prior to 1900 or 1910, when we have our first data, it does show a lower value. Um, However, this will eventually dip down to nothing, and we can't have that. There was, or less than nothing, we can't have negative cheese consumption, but we are able to work through it. The important thing when you're looking at regression is a certain value that is labeled as an R squared when your calculator runs the program. So looking at a table of values from each of these, we can seek for the best value. Now previously we talked about an R regression number. It 
for linears are told whether we are moving up or down. But if we take a look instead at our r squared value, this takes r just as it is and squares it. So what we come up with is a truer number of how well the points adhere to our data. So in a linear regression model, you can see r squared is 0.71. In our quadratic regression, we jump from basically 71% accurate to a 96.9. And then in a cubic regression, we go up to a 99.73% accuracy. So the higher we go, or the closer that r squared value is to 1, the better it's going to be at predicting future events. And when we're working in regression models, or when we're trying to model real-world values, we have two different things. We have something called interpolation, which the base of this is inter, meaning inside. Um, we can use it to look at things that make predictions about what's happening on data years that we don't have. And then we have what's called extrapolation, extra meaning outside. We can use it to predict what's going to happen in the future. If our r squared value is not close to 1, our extrapolations are not going to be very reliable. Uh, interpolation is always up for debate because we could go and look up the information, but these are using data models to make a best guess. So a lot of information here, how to use the technology and how to make these computations by hand. Uh, a lot of information, take a look over it and make sure you're ready to use it.